Welcome back. Uh, this is M Dog, and we are actually at Tunguska. And I mentioned this yesterday during the last cart video I did from Amber yesterday that we were. I was wanting to try out the Sturlet spot here at Tunguska, and that is in fact where we are now. This is the first time I've tried night crawlers in this spot. Uh, night crawlers may catch some species that we don't necessarily want to catch. The other two baits we're using, I've tested, and they are great. They're working really well. Um, but we'll see how the night callers do, and we'll just give it a few minutes here. I'm not going to belabor the point, but just want to at least get a couple of fish in and uh, let you see the spot a little bit as we head into nighttime. Um, the PVA we're using uh, from the VK site is actually a pretty common PVA, I would say. One of the variations, at least. It does have clay which you usually see as an additive when you're in one of the rivers whose current is stronger. I think it is supposed to hold the ground bait together, theoretically, more so or for longer amounts of time, even in current. Um, but yeah, this PVA is pretty typical. We are using 2.0 hooks on all three rods, 27.7 fluorocarbon line, uh, and everything else is about the same. Using Fortuna carp rods, instead of my nicer carp rods just because that way I don't have to like disassemble and break down and put back together so I use my nicer carp rods for carp fishing or sturgeon fishing and then I use these for some of the other random bottom stuff that needs a little bit more strength we are using our Tagara and two Megaras though for this spot so this spot was working yesterday quite well I guess we will see if today uh, seems similar and I just logged on so hopefully we'll get a little bit of happy hour fish and hopefully I will not get interrupted by work before at least giving a few minutes and catching a few fish in this spot uh, I don't really have a sense of what the bite rate will feel like in real time because yesterday when I was um, testing this spot out for the first time, uh, or at least the first time in a long time, I was doing other things. And so it, it seemed like the bite rate was decent, but I was also distracted. I was watching a stream. I was, you know, playing something else, messing around with stuff. So we'll see how it actually feels when this is the only thing we're doing. Looks like we either have a fish on or about to. Real quick, the other two baits we're using, river mussels in the middle, and then on the far left, the uh, cockchafer uh, larva, which does really well, especially with the Amur catfish at night. The main thing we're wanting to catch here is sterlet. But the nice thing is that we will also have the possibility of catching some pretty decent um, Amur catfish, as well as burbot. And every once in a while, you'll see an eastern bream come in. But again, that is with um, yesterday when I was testing, I had river mussels on two for most of the time and then the Schaefer's on one. But then I switched it because I'm getting low on river mussels. I switched it to Schaefer's on two and river mussels on one. Um, I think night crawlers will do the same thing, will catch the same fish, at least with the sterlet. I think they will catch the sterlet. I'm a little concerned that they might also catch other things, that there might be more uh, off catch with the night crawlers. And I'm hoping that they don't target the sturgeon. We don't want to get sturgeon on these setups. Um, and we did not catch any here yesterday with the baits I was using. So I'm hoping that doesn't change. Hopefully they're just not biting in this spot. I think the slowest bite rate yesterday I tried to notice during the day was in the middle of the day, which we're kind of coming out of now. But hopefully as the temperature drops, again, we'll see a sterlet or two uh, as it gets to be nighttime, we'll likely see at least one Amur catfish come in pretty quick. And overnight, I was probably catching about two burbot for every one catfish. 
uh, which the catfish are going to be better silver and, and XP, but uh, they're both decent, you know, so especially on silver. I had one cafe order from a burbot, and in just over 24 hours, made 400 silver in this spot yesterday. And I felt like if anything, the sterlet I caught were a little on the small side. If I had been a little luckier on larger sterlet, then that amount would have gone up. Um, but that does require at least a reasonable bite rate as well. I mean, we ha I had a good many fish in, uh, in that like 30 hour time period. We are catching more chafers, chafers than uh, than we are fish from digging. I do think it will pick up again here shortly. It's already gone down from fifteen from fifteen Celsius to thirteen point six, so I think they'll start biting here any any second. But I could be wrong. Things could have changed. By the way, I'm at forty five clip, and we're basically casting. If you look on the map kind of right below or at the bottom of the 17 meter hole is the spot in which we're casting at 45 meters. So this seems to be on the night crawlers and that may have been the rod that was getting a nibble before, but it's possible that the hook size prevented whatever was nibbling. By the way, if you want to catch more amours, it might be worth considering to go with a little bit smaller hook size. I think I would probably go with around large one. But my main target has been the sterlet in this spot, and, and you still do catch some amours on it, so I've been okay with that. But once again, I'm not sure this is going to, this nibble is going to turn into a bite. So I think we've gotten two fish scared away from our, that's amazing. We're getting chafers almost every dig. Um, I think we've had two fish scared away from our hook size potentially, which may be okay. We might not have wanted those fish anyway.
that's night crawlers again that actually may have turned into yep now one thing that is interesting about this spot is you're bringing them up in from out of the hole and usually it's not a problem if you just kind of reel straight like we did here. That looks like that's an Amur. Yeah, it's a small one. Isn't that amazing? It's not even a marker and it's 2,500 experience with all the bonuses and everything. But with the ledge, if, if you do have a fish that you're having to fight against, and if you start hitting right click, Anyway, you'll notice that the fish will kind of get stuck on the side there and you'll have a lot of tension until you can kind of steadily get it up over the ledge and then it'll suddenly become a lot easier. All right, well, we'll take the XP even though that's not going to be any silver for us. So starting to wonder if the sterlet have slowed down a little bit. We've been here long enough I would have expected. At least one sterlet I would think. Or it may just be that they are they're more reliable in the morning. Nightcrawlers again, which hey, if I mean if, especially if the nightcrawlers will also catch the sterlet, I would be all about just using nightcrawlers here and not the gold baits. But I still think during the day those chafers and the river mussels are going to be awfully good. So that is a little sterlet, barely a marker, I think. So, you know, that's a temptation. Just throw night crawlers a lot cheaper. Uh, it's actually going to make your profit more significant if you're not having to cast, you know, use gold baits. Very nice digs. 
wish the fishing was better, but we've had some good digs. I guess let's look and see, make sure we're not having some unusual weather. No, it should be fine. You, of course, you love to see Tunguska when it gets even a little lower temps, but for what we're doing, 14, 15 degrees as a high for the day should be fine. Supposedly, we've got some storms today that might have already happened, though. We're at the end of the day, so... I was actually planning on, and I, and I will probably still get to this, but I was planning on doing, um, man, look at this, in one day, my 25.6 mirror has been knocked off US Weekly. I was planning on doing another spot check at, at Amber uh, at PEG-1, but um, I was already here, so instead of paying travel costs back and forth, I decided to prioritize this first. Okay. Here's the first bite we've had on the chafers. So let's see, my guess is this will be a burbot based on the time of day uh, being this late in the evening, but you never know, it could be a, uh, a sterlet. This doesn't feel very large, whatever it is. Okay, it's a little sterlet. So again, we're on the sterlet, um, which that's a good sign. I am seeing, continuing to see the smaller sizes, uh, which is unfortunate. Which bait do we want to pull up for nighttime? Probably this one. I'm going to test something, guys. I mean, this may not work at all, but I want to at least see. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this spontaneously, but it'll give us something to do, especially if this continues to be slow. All right, so we are using the 35 white mouse I'm going to start with a 25 retrieval speed, and we're just going to cast this sucker. try 20 next time. I think there is going to be a fish on here. So this is Chafers again. And this is a little better fish, I think. So if it's a burbot, it's a mid-sized burbot. Uh, it's, some of that was the ledge. Now that we've got it past the ledge, it's not very big. It's another, oh, it's an Amur. Nice. That's a good Amur. We'll take 18.5 XP. Absolutely. All right, so now we have it on 20 retrieval speed. Maybe we should try this closer to like sun up time. This is something I've never done before, but I want to say in my mind, I have 
I'm thinking this might have been one of the places that this was a possible thing to do. And I don't know about the leader size. I might have way too big a leader on there. But because you can hit timing like this, I'm assuming you don't want a small leader, so. All right, let's go to 35. I think that'll be too fast, though. I feel like 25 with straight retrieval is probably where, where, where you want to be. But let's just try this. And then we'll try 25 one more time. And then we'll put the feeder out again if we still don't have a bite. And we'll try this again maybe in the morning. At least that's the plan, the idea. Yeah, I just think that's a little fast. Could be wrong. Remember in the last significant update, other than the qualifications update, there was a buff to the bite rate on these rodents. So I've heard that not trolling them, but casting with them can pr produce some results now. At least so far though, I'm not seeing it. And I am fairly certain that it's straight retrieval you want with the rodents. All right, so let's get this back out for just a little while. And we're gonna try that again like four to 5 a.m. Start trying it again to see if we can figure something out with it. <clears throat> Cause that would be fun. Like if that does produce results and it's like manageable. I don't know about fighting a time in from shore though. I'm really curious what people are using leader wise. Maybe you don't use a leader at all and just get the full strength out of your line. I don't know. Yeah. So right now the chafers are doing better. Although I did see this yesterday. Chafers were doing better at night because that's what the uh, Amur catfish are liking um, at Burbit some as well. And then the river mussels are doing better during the day, actually hitting the sterlets during the daytime. So it actually would probably be better to just like take off. There's another nice little sterlet. I mean, look, these are small, right? This isn't the sterlet size we want, but it's 12,000 XP. Uh, they do add up in silver, even the smaller ones. Um, so this isn't terrible, but you are wanting to, to really push it to the next level. You're gonna wanna hit some bigger ones. Catfish, as you know, add up too though on silver. So, I mean, really no complaints. Um, and this spot during the daytime is, 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 can be even better. Of course, you're not getting the Amours, but you're getting Burbit will bite through the morning. Sometimes Amours will a little bit, but, and then you start, I feel like you get more Sterlets at that point. We haven't seen a burbot yet, which surprises me. Um, I think I was getting burbot on, at least on river mussels, maybe on chafers as well. Again, this is the first time I've tried night crawlers. So far, it's been fine. I mean, we caught what, um, two fish on the night crawlers? No, just one, I guess. Yeah. So just one on the night crawlers. Oh, we had the undersized Amur on night crawlers as well. I like how much we have been able to dig though. Another one. I think we're just about breaking even on the chafers right now. Because I've not been one to aggressively fish for sturgeon, I will just occasionally do it. Same with sterlet. I've really never had to buy gold baits other than a team comp one time. Um, I usually, because I do so much carp fishing and other stuff, I usually dig enough gold baits that when I get the urge to go fish for something, I've got some. 
I do probably need to spend some time at either Sevierski or Winding and get some more river mussels. I'm down to 30, and that's pretty low for me. But you can go for um, you can go for the Donich Rough Trophy and just sit there and catch a lot of river mussels that way as well. So it's not too bad. All right, let's give it another hour in game, and then let's throw the rodent again. I had forgotten about that. And this may not be the right spot, but since we are at shore, I would think. All right, this is on Chafers. What is this? This is the first, first time I've had a fish do this. Did we actually hit a, uh, a sturgeon? It's just like the slow death, the slow death of getting spooled. Well, it's starting to pick up speed now, isn't it? We're nowhere near being able to just reel it in. This is legitimately going to be a fight. And I don't know, like if we could get some movement past that ledge. I'm either even thinking about maybe just like trying a different angle here. One of the reasons why I don't like going for sturgeon here, especially, and I don't know that that's what this is, but they are so strong, and between the sturgeon and the current, unless you have the very top of the line gear and have it overloaded and just set up just right, even just a normal one can cause a lot of problems. And our mech is just not really slowing it down. When it decides it wants to run, it's just, just, just running on us. And I don't know, you know, and so sturgeon fights, if it's a sturgeon, it's no, no, no problem for the sturgeon to, to run and fight on you for 20, 30 minutes. Um, for the big ones at least. And by then at Tunguska, you are very likely out of line. Trying to see if we can get a little bit back here, but not really. This may be a heck of a fish. So 
So the only thing I really know to do in this situation is just try to put as much pressure, tension on the fish, get it as tired as possible. When it gives us a little line back, we'll take it. We'll check friction break every once in a while, turn it up a little bit, see if as it gets tired, if we can start stopping it. But I, I definitely don't want to be fighting sturgeon on 27 kilo liters, which is what we're doing right now if it's a sturgeon. This is why I like to play with blinkers usually because just hearing that bell ring right now causes anxiety for me. <laughs> like, it, even though I know it's the wrong thing to do, it just makes me want to pick up the other, the other rod. By the way, sorry about the cyberpunk ads. Um, I will say this, I'm fortunate that the fish has decided to run left. And I wasn't even thinking about that, to be honest. But if the fish goes right in this spot, it's out of bounds. And I can only walk down the shore just a little ways to try to, to try to stay with it. But if we can keep it moving left, for the most part, then, you know, at the end of the day, we might be able to stay in this and, and actually wear him out. So, if it's a sterlet, it should be a very nice sterlet. It's definitely not a burbot. It's not fighting like a big trophy burbot. It feels to me like a mid-sized sturgeon. It's not a big sturgeon, but I don't think. But, you know. All right, so now it's actually, as I say that, it's running right now. So let's... Let's make sure we're looking right and that we are to the right of the fish. Yeah, and see it already turned back left now, which is good. A little worried about how much line we have on our reel at this point, but if we keep it in bounds, we're probably okay. We have what? 300, 300 meters of line on this Megara. I just need to stop trying the right click thing right now. It's not doing anything. But if sturgeon are biting here now, that changes everything about how I would approach it. And, and you know, you would, you would want to use your bigger stuff but then the question is, does that decrease your bite rate on which, you know, the sterlet and the amours if you're having to plan for the possible sturgeon? And I don't know. I don't know if it would or not, but it might. It was working really well at 27 kilo fluorocarbon just to get those sturge the sterlet and the amours. Line is slowly coming back on right now. Now it will catch a second, third, fourth wind or whatever, but it is kind of, it took a break there, sort of acting tired there for a minute. Well, this is not the type of video I was planning on recording, but here we are, huh? 
I really wanted to test that rodent out now that it's daytime, but just can't put the line down. Yes, just let us do that for a little while. This fish still has a fight to it, doesn't it? All right, this is going to keep going like this for a little bit longer. I'm going to mute myself just for a second here, or for a minute here. I oh, wish I had my, uh... well, hold on. It's definitely getting a little more tired. All right, one minute here. All right, any change? Anything different going on with this fella?
Well, the fish on the other line, which there might be two fish on by now, I don't know, but they, it or they have been very patient waiting for us to try to catch this fish. We're going to walk it down a little bit. I feel like the end is in sight now, unless it pops off. We're getting more line than we're losing at this point. I need to quit chatting. <laughs> I need to quit responding to chat and just focus on this fish. All right, let's walk it down a little bit more. So at least one line, I'm just not sure about the other one. See if we can finish this fish off here. Yep, 
yeah, it's it's tired. Whatever it is, it is tired. It doesn't want to fight any longer. and then fights longer. No, you can't see it. You might be able to see my line is, sp is spinning on right now. We are reeling. I'm just looking up to try to apply as much pressure as possible because we are almost there on, on tiring it out. Just remember the difference of where we are now in terms of how much it's pulling and for how long it's pulling to where we were when this first started. Although it's still pretty much over across against the shore over there. I think that we could have gotten in way more trouble with this fish if it had run more diagonal to the left or right especially to the right but even if it had taken a hard path to the left the more you're moving on land the higher chance that early disconnect could happen with the fish spitting the bit so And one thing that can be confusing here is I have felt like, oh, this fish is almost worn out. We're going to reel it in soon. If it is pushing up against the bank over there, there's going to be times that we're getting line back in and it's not pulling line because there's nowhere for the fish to go. And I don't know how much of that is happening versus it it really getting tired at this point. I do think it's getting fatigued, but there could be other factors that are making me think it's more fatigued than it really is. Yeah, the whole thing that drew me to this spot of wanting to try it yesterday and then having a really good experience here yesterday 
was that it looked like people using these bait setups were avoiding the really big fish. So you're able, so theoretically you're going to able, be able to fish effectively, efficiently, and without these long, long fights. Now, as long as this is the right type of fish and a decent size, in the end it will be worth it if we can get it in. But I've got to be in the right headspace to want to spend this much time fighting a fish and if I'm fishing for sturgeon I definitely want to be using the right strength equipment um, and leaders and such because it does make a huge difference because this fight really is more reminding me of When I caught what was it? Was it seventy five kilos? Yeah, seventy five kilo Russian sturgeon. However, that was frankly just with a lot more strength in my gear. A lot more. Uh, a lot more. Pulled some line back in. Now let's see if he just pulls it right back out and heads to the side. I think that may be what's happening. These Tunguska, if it is a Tunguska sturgeon, they are just nasty. And the Timon are as well, although I'll be surprised if this is a Timon. Again, I think this I think we've got to be dealing with a sturgeon or a really, really nice sturlet. And I'm not even sure a really, really nice sturlet would go this long. We have a hill in front of us. We do have elevation. Let's try this. It's a little risky in terms of just, you don't really want to move at all as, if possible, but this will give us a little bit more of a height advantage.
Does it look like it is just dead against that shore over there? No, maybe not currently. So hopefully now with being a little more elevated and just the strength of our rod, we are Speaking of the strength of our rod, if I knew we were going to be catching sturgeon, I would definitely have been using the stronger rods. haven't seen this much line on our reel in a long time. Wow. Take it while you can get it. Place your bets. 27 kilo leader, fluorocarbon leader, so weak leader for sturgeon, but caught it on chafers in an active sterlet, burbot, a moor catfish spot. No, don't start doing that again. I think if we could turn it again, we might be okay here. Yeah, there we go. Just got to keep turning him. He's not, doesn't have a ton of fight left in him. He's not on the surface, is he? If I could ever get a look, up, look at him, it would be interesting because you never know when they're going to pop off. We could still lose this fish. I know the up and down is a little annoying, but I feel like it just kind of in, encourages that uh, the force to continue pulling it towards you at times. I'll do anything to try to keep the momentum up to keep reeling him in at this point. Yeah, I mean, best case scenario is a sterlet, but it's in all likelihood a sturgeon. Guess the next dangerous thing is going to be when we actually start walking him down. Just want to make sure we don't lose the fish. Keep plenty of tension on the line. And at this point, I will not reel when he's pulling against us like this. He's not going to pull much line at this point. So if he wants to pull just a little bit, we'll let him. We're not going to take those kind of risks anymore. He's too close. All right, he 
he's getting very close to the shore. I want to see what it is before I pop a couple sips of alcohol for the tipsy bonus. like a sturgeon to me. Yeah. All right, he's going to pull a little bit. Let's just take this opportunity to Just get a little bonus XP. Hopefully happy hour is still active, but I don't know if it is. All right, 83K, 24.9 kilo sturgeon. There's our burbot. Is there really not a fish on this? That's interesting that night crawlers stayed there for that long and did not get a fish. <laughs> Apparently that's not the barracuda. Wait. Figure this out eventually. So that was a weekly East Siberian sturgeon. Let's sell it back down to 20 again. Uh, I think the place that you actually want to do this is down here. I can't remember if it's from this shore or this shore. Down around that 12 meter hole, but So I don't really know, you know, <clears throat> as exciting as that fish was, I don't really know what to say about this spot. It still may be the case that that's very rare. We could have just hit the rare sturgeon uh, that got on there. Um, but I fished, you know, like, again, I fished this for over a, an, over more than an in-game day yesterday and never saw even a small one or anything, you know, so... I just don't know, but let's just for interesting, just in terms of looking, let's go see like silver comparisons. See if the little sterlet and the Luan Amur, kind of what the silver looks like on that. I guess we've coming up on an hour, you know, we're about 10 real life minutes away from being an hour of fishing, but a lot of that time was on one sort of smallish sturgeon, so. 
I, I really, 24.9 kilos, I think I would have guessed, I think I would have guessed 30, 35 for how long it fought. But, I, you know, you intentionally don't fight sturgeon with this kind of setup. So it, it's, it's hard to know. You don't have anything to compare it to. Check the cafe orders. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's going to be another lucky burbot. So that's 17 silver. Um, we'll look and see what it's worth here first. But <clears throat> So that burbot is worth four silver, except that we got lucky on the... My mouse is like giving out or something. Um... So 113 silver for the sturgeon is going to kind of save us from it being pretty low. But if you see these, you know, again, I think it's possible in that spot to get at least three or four catfish during the night. That's what I saw yesterday when I did this. 31 silver a pop. It just goes up so fast. And then you really, these sterlet prices are okay, but you just need a little bit bigger to start seeing the silver you know, go up a little, a lot more. 177 for uh, for 24 hours at Tunguska is actually pretty low. Uh, now this cafe order helps a little bit, but at the end of the day, that's still pretty low. Okay, as always, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope it was entertaining for you, and I will see you next time. Peace out.